see on TV with like CSI. Um, first of all, uh, it's not that fast. It's not CSI. <laughs> don't believe CSI. Uh, it's not like CSI. <laughs> we don't um, solve crimes or DNA, or, uh, DNA cases within the 45 minute window. <laughs> Um, these wildlife genetics started in the early 90s. People started saying, wait a minute, we can use this to learn about wildlife populations. People realized that they could use DNA tools developed in agricultural species such as domestic sheep and use those for wild species such as bighorn sheep. Or use markers developed um, in domestic dogs and use those in wolf populations. Everybody thinks DNA, it says one thing. It, it codes for what you are. Before genetics, I believe, came along, a lot of wildlife management was observational based, so there's a lot of you know, people do flyovers to um, get estimates on you know different populations. So the thing with wildlife genetics is that you can, you know, you don't even have to put anybody out in the field. Wildlife genetics can tell you a variety of things. Um, some of what we do is based on non-invasive samples, so where you're not actually catching the animal, you're putting out a hair snag in the woods and the animal's just rubbing up against it and leaving hair, or you're going out and finding um, scat, tracking animals, so you don't actually have to handle the animal. And one thing we can do is, first of all, confirm what species um, those animals um, are. You don't need a lot of material, um, but you can look at migration, you can see how you know, animals are moving throughout their ecosystems. What attracted me to it, and what still attracts me to it, is that we can start to unravel some of these mysteries by using the genetic code. We can start to look at movement. So we get DNA samples from a group of animals over here, another group over here, and we can make some inference as to movement. In augmenting traditional wildlife biology studies, you can look at things like relatedness of individuals in a population, the origin, genetic origins of populations. You can look at genetic variation, um, estimate uh, population sizes. Population densities and uh, knowing that you can put hair snares out and get a fairly accurate, depending, you know, get a fairly accurate number of how many individuals there actually are in a population instead of just kind of guesswork. And so what we do here in the lab is first we can use DNA to identify and confirm the species and oftentimes the presence. So in cases like Wolverine where people, um, they're very rare, oftentimes we can use scats to confirm that there really was a Wolverine there. And then we can also um, get information such as individual and gender. Anywhere from actually getting the samples uh, given to us, which can be hair, blood, urine, tissue, scat, um, and then us going through the process of actually extracting the DNA. You can't just hold an animal and put a collar on it and expect to learn um, how the whole, the, the species as a whole work. Well, geographically, we have projects all over the country and also internationally. I'm currently working on um, a huge mountain beaver project from California. A large uh, number of the projects that we're working on right now have to do with fisher. Um, fisher are a big species of interest in the state of California. I've been working on this Italian wolf project. Cougars. Cougars are expanding their range. Bears. Finished up a bear project, black bear project, a Montana, Idaho black bear project just recently. You know, the field of uh, DNA in general and DNA tools and technology is just incredibly rapidly evolving. And one of the most exciting things about this job is the fact that it's constantly changing every day. I think that DNA can offer a lot of useful information to actually set realistic um, management goals that can actually be most beneficial for the species. DNA work is not easy, it's frustrating, um, it's tedious, but it's so rewarding when you get the results that you need. You know what's a great thing about DNA is that you, you, don't, you don't need, you can collect hair, you can collect scat, and urine, you can, you know, there's a lot of things you can collect, and you, there's a lot of information you can get from, you know, five hairs, which is really, I think, cool about genetics. Yeah, science is cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>